Hi there. Thank you for joining me on the program, Your Doctor in COVID. I'm Dr. Mahendra Karpin. I'm the head of medical services and cardiology at the Georgetown Public Hospital Corporation. We continue to talk about the COVID-19 pandemic, its impact on Guyana and its impact on specific patients. By now, most of us would actually have known someone who had COVID or we would have been touched by it ourselves. We are past over 10,000 persons who have tested positive in the community and we continue to have persons unfortunately dying from this deadly pandemic. We continue our conversations and want to welcome once again Dr. Camila Bimal Suku, a specialist in hematology, an area of medicine that actually deals with diseases of the blood. And it is very important that we continue this conversation as it relates to disorders of the blood, since people are very worried about blood clots and vaccines as we continue to roll out our vaccination program across Guyana. Remember, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to send a WhatsApp message to 620-6275 or send an email to docandcovid at gmail.com. Dr. Bimal, welcome once again. Thank you. You and I are at least six feet apart, so we can take our masks off sure. to continue our conversation. Mm -hmm. When we last spoke, you were explaining to us about blood clots and we were having a conversation about vaccines, mm -hmm. the link with blood clots, if it's you know a big link, it's a small link. You were of the opinion that the benefits far outweigh the risks and people should continue getting vaccines because one in a million persons will develop these types of blood clots. Do you definitely. still have that opinion? Of course, definitely. Good. Yes. So why are blood clots dangerous? You can, you mm -hmm. know, from your experience, your training, why are blood yeah. clots dangerous? So blood clots that happen in the deep veins, will be, which will be the veins in the deep system. So those are not, those will be the veins that you cannot see. So, you know, for the local people, um, like the veins that you can see on the, you know, the surface of your skin, those will be superficial veins. If you have blood clots in these veins, it's not to worry. Um, okay. You know, you just apply, you know, um, some pain relief or things like that. You can just rub on. You don't really need to use medications. Now, the worry becomes, um, you know, it becomes dangerous when you have clots in the deep veins. And then the clots in the deep veins can actually break off and travel to the lung. Mm -hmm. Now, that's one of the things that can be fatal. So, for example, if you have a, a clot in the leg and a piece breaks off and go to the lung, people will start to have or start to experience shortness of breath suddenly. All right. Mm -hmm. um, or they might start to... Uh, have, you know, feel their heart racing. They may, may start to cough. Some people might cough blood. Um, they might just have a normal cough. So those are the kind of things that someone might experience if they have a piece of that clot breaking, up from, breaking out from their leg or from their hand and going to their lung, right? Okay. So if that happens, then remember it's a, something that's occluding blood flow in the vessel. And so in the lung, we have blood taking oxygen to the lung from the heart, things like that. So, you know, if you have a blockage in that circulation, then oxygen is cut off to your body. Right. And so, of course, you know, without oxygen, we cannot survive. Correct. So yeah. that is the problem. If that happens, then of course you can die. If you recognize it early, then you can get enough time to get to a hospital and seek medical attention. All and right. So these, some of these clots may be small, but then sometimes there are also very large clots that can move from you know the deep veins and travel up to the lungs. Yes, and everything there is always you know a mild form and a severe form. So if you have a, a clot in the leg, it can very well stay in the leg. Um, and you might just have symptoms that you have a clot in the leg. So for mm -hmm. example, the leg might start to swell, you'll have some pain, things like that. Some people might not even have a problem and they have a clot in the leg. So you can have mild forms of blood clots, deep, deep blood clots as well, right. right? So that will be a mild form. And then it, 
if that breaks off and go to the lung, so the lung has a variety of branches in the, in the vessel system. So if it goes into one of the vessels that's far out, we, we really refer to that as a peripheral region, right. or one of the small branches of the lung, you might not even have a problem. You might not even have shortness of breath or anything. It goes there, it blocks a small part of the vessel, and over time it resolves, the body break, breaks it down and it goes back to normal. Right. However, if it goes into one of the major vessels of the lung, then of course it will knock out that part of the lung. It depends on how big of a, um, or a region that vessel is supplying. Okay. So if the vessel is supplying a tiny portion of the lung and it has a blood clot, you probably would not get any problems. But if it's a major portion of the lung that's being knocked out, then remember you are accustomed to having two lung functioning and now right. a whole part is not functioning or a whole half is not functioning. So you will start to be symptomatic. So people can get really sick if the bigger parts of the lungs that are affected. Yes, definitely. Okay. Yeah. So we talked about blood clots and a potential link between vaccines and we explored some of that the last time we spoke. Yeah. Would you mind repeating some of that in terms of what kind of links exist that we know of and how significant is the link? Mm -hmm. So the common sites that um, are involved with COVID vaccines would be blood clots in the brain, so um, in the vessels of the brain and in the vessels of the intestine. And how in often the does that happen really? It happens one in one to four million. One to four million. Yeah. Contrast that to how often blood clots happen in a normal pregnancy is one in 4,000 normal pregnancy. Right. Or with oral contraceptive pills, one yep. in 2,000. Yeah. So it's a much, much less chance of developing blood clots from the vaccine than, mm -hmm. you know, routine pregnancy or use of oral contraceptive. It's by far less, by far less. It's not even less by a thousand, it's less by a million or more. Okay. So, I mean, it it's really is significant, um, but in, in countries where there are millions of people, then obviously their counts will be more than ours. We haven't even reached a million persons as yet in, in our population. So um, highly unlikely, I would expect that to happen in Guyana. Um, that someone is having a blood clot from yeah, the vaccine. Yeah, that would be very unfortunate that we start to get blood clots from vaccines if we are not even a million people. Exactly. That will just be unfortunate, right. yeah. So what are some common reasons for people to develop blood clots ordinarily? Let's forget mm -hmm. about COVID vaccines, COVID, mm -hmm. etc. Yeah, so ordinarily, like I mentioned um, yesterday, um, the incidence or the occurrence in a person who has no no predisposing factor, it's one in a thousand person. Right. So for every thousand person, one person is at risk to get a blood clot. Now things that will increase your risk for blood clots will be age. As you get older, your risk for blood clot increases. Um, comorbidities, so things such as diabetes, hypertension, okay. obesity is very high. Um, Things like um, the kind of job you do. So for persons who have a kind of sedentary li lifestyle. You sit all the time so, or lie down. Exactly. You sit all the time for clerks, um, drivers, chauffeurs. Those kind of persons, they're at high risk for blood clots because they're sitting in a chair for hours. Um, so they're definitely at risk for blood clots. Other things will be medication. So as you mentioned, contraceptives, there is an association with contraceptives um, and, and blood clots. And any kind of hormonal kind of therapy is involved with, right. or increases your risk for blood clots. Um, smoking increases your chance of blood clots as well. So even if you stop smoking less than 10 years, you still have that risk of having a blood clot that has been aggravated or associated from your smoking. So your specialty, uh, hematology, diseases of the blood, is there, apart from the clotting and, you know, that as a, a spin-off of COVID, is there any other way in which COVID-19 affects diseases of the blood, sickle cell, thalassemia, hemophilia, etc.? Mm -hmm. how, how does it overlap and, and link up with those types of diseases? So 
COVID in itself, um, because of the way it functions and it affects the body, it causes cells, so for example, some of the cells, for example, the lymphocytes, is reduced in numbers. Lymphocytes are the soldier or the defense cells of the body, right? They're one of the sets of, of soldiers of the body, right? right? And those are the lymphocytes and those are kind of viral fighters. Okay. So those are reduced. Whereas the ones, the, the cells, which is called polymorphs, that, you know, soldiers for a bacterial infection, those cells is increased. Mm -hmm. So you have a reduction in one set of cells, white blood cells, and the other set is increased. Right. Right. And in the platelets, it reduces the platelets. Okay. So that's one way it affects the cells itself. And then it increases that cascade to form blood clots. All right. So that's in a nutshell, what it really does with your hematological system. With regards to specific diseases, for example, hemophilia, it, there is, you know, it's not increase, you're not an increased risk to get COVID if you're hemophilia or you're but sickle hemophilia cell. Hemophilia is a bleeding disease, It's right? a bleeding disorder, right. right? You're not at an increased risk to get COVID because you have that disorder, Okay. right? And it goes back to square one. You, you have to practice safe distancing, sanitizing. It's just like a normal person, right. right? But because you have hemophilia, I will still advise people or any kind of bleeding disorder, um, take that extra precaution because we already know that COVID puts you at risk to have blood clots and right. to bleed. So if you already have a bleeding disorder or a clotting disorder, you do not want COVID to actually come into your system because it will add to what Make you already have. Make everything else worse. Yeah. Right. So mm -hmm. do we have a lot of sickle cell patients in Guyana? We do have a lot of sickle cell patients. I do not have the count for that, right. but we do have a reasonable amount. Um, I know for hemophilia, we, it's a small group. It's about 16 to 17 patients. Okay. Um, but not because you know, because I've just returned, awareness is not out there, sensitization right. is not out there. A lot of people have bleeding disorders since inherited conditions. And because, um, you know, they're accustomed to, okay, my mom had heavy menses, so this is normal for me. Oh, my father used to bleed a lot if he got cut, so it's normal for me. Right. So this is like a culture kind of thing. People think it's normal for them to have these things, and they do not seek medical attention. Okay. Right? But I just want to tell the public out there, like, if you know or you see signs of um, any kind of abnormal bleeding, like you get cut, you have a tooth extraction, um, you've had surgery, females who've had... Um, you know, a lot of hemorrhaging with birth, childbirth, those kind of things. Start to look at it, start to mm -hmm. recognize it. When you go to your doctor, you know, say, well, I've noticed this. And then once you tell the doctor that, then they will know the appropriate test to do. And testing is available. So okay. they will know the appropriate test to do and the appropriate channeling so that they can end up at our hospital, Jarchung Hospital, where we have a hematology clinic. And we have specialist care available. Specialist care at for the hospital. Yeah, sickle cell patients, hemophilia patients, we take care of all the hematological disorders there. Yeah. Yeah. Is there any special considerations or special thoughts you want to share about the sickle cell patient in particular as it relates to the COVID-19 pandemic? So sickle cell patients, um, they have a lot of things in common with COVID. So like we talk, COVID puts you at risk to have that increased cascade into blood clots. And, and sickle cell patients, they actually have that increased risk to have blood clots as well. So um, if you're to have the two, of course, blood clots will be aggravated or increased right. risk in those patients, right? So that's, of course, it goes back to them taking extra precaution not to get COVID. So these are patients, especially up front, should take vaccines, right? right? So our, hemoph our hematological population, they should make sure they take their vaccines because they do not want to have anything to aggravate their condition. So I'm actually glad that you ended on that note to encourage your patients to take the COVID-19 vaccine. So I want yep. to thank you once again for coming on the program and for sharing your expertise 
with our viewers and listeners. And we wish you all the best, all the success as you continue your pioneering work in the area of hematology in Guyana. Thank you once again for being on the program. Thank you so much. And all our viewers and listeners, I want to thank you very much for joining us. Remember, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to send a WhatsApp message to 620-6275 or send an email to docandcovid at gmail.com. Thanks once again for joining us. Mm -hmm.